This is Samantha Grigg. A few years ago, she was living her life doing what she did best, singing. Her future was bright and she even had an audition coming up. Now she's being accused of murder after a fellow musician was found into death in the middle of the road. So how did she get from here to here? I would like to extend my deepest remorse to the family of the victim. He was a fellow musician. It really breaks my heart. And I, I wish I could take it back every day. This is the case of Samantha Gregg. The teen girl sings while in court for classmate to death. At 10.23 p.m. on February 15, 2014, police in Bath Township, Michigan responded to a 911 call from a motorist who reported that there was a man lying unconscious on the highway along I-69 near the East Lansing exit. When the officers arrived at the scene, they found that the man was partially clothed and in what they called respiratory distress. A passing motorist, who happened to be a nurse, started performing CPR until the paramedics arrived and rushed him to the nearby hospital. But sadly, he was was pronounced dead. At the time, it was not immediately clear what had killed him, but abrasions were found on his body that were consistent with hitting the pavement. So who was this man and what had happened to him? Why was he half naked on the side of the freeway? An investigation was immediately launched as the police tried to find answers to these questions, and soon enough they were able to identify the man as 19-year-old Dustin Louis Froelke from Owasso, Michigan. Dustin Froelke was born in June 1994 to Sherry Frolka and Louis Hinka. He graduated in 2012 from Owasso High School and was a sophomore at Michigan State University studying business management. He was a devoted father to a 10-month-old daughter, and according to his sister, he was determined to make a good life for her. Dustin was also a talented rapper who went by the name of Defro and had high hopes of making it in the music industry. His sister said he had goals of making it in the music industry, whether it was the business side of things or the talent side. He was working and going to school and trying to make a better life for himself and for his daughter. Dustin had even been signed to a lasting record label, but according to his friends and family members, he started spiraling downwards in the months leading up to his death. He started using and selling narcotics and was even arrested in January 2014 by the MSU police for cane possession. This resulted in him being kicked out of his campus dorm, forcing him to move in with friends off campus. A few hours before his death, he had tweeted this about using narcotics. DMT stands for dimethotetryptamine and acts as a hallucinogenic drug when taken. When police later searched his apartment in Saline, they found illegal narcotics inside. His phone records also led the police to arrest three teenagers, 18-year-old Tyrell Bernendez, 16-year-old Brendan Heim, and 18-year-old Samantha Grigg. All three had connections to Saline High School. Samantha was a senior in the school and set to graduate, while Brendan was enrolled in the school but hadn't attended since finishing his sophomore more year. Tyrell had also graduated from the school. But how did these three know Dustin, and how were they involved in his death? To understand how these four teens were connected, we need to look at one of them in particular, Samantha Grigg. Samantha was a bright student and a talented musician. She was the lead singer in a local rock band named Undecided, and even performed at the 2012 Ann Arbor Summer Festival. It was clear to everyone who knew Samantha that she had a bright future ahead of her. So how did she get involved in all of these? Police believe that Samantha met Dustin through music, and while it's not clear the kind of relationship they had, phone records show that they began communicating a week or two before his death. Investigators believed that Samantha and the two suspects had attacked Dustin with the intention of robbing him of drugs and money before leaving him for dead. The evidence shows a 19-year-old MSU student had been beaten with brass knuckles and dumped along the freeway north of the campus in Bath Township. That was at 10.30 Saturday night, February the 15th. Police sources say the connection to Celine was made through the victim's cell phone. According to the arrest reports, the three teens were arrested around midnight on February 22nd at two different apartment complexes. Tyrell was found in his apartment, while Brayden and Samantha were found inside the car that police believe was used to commit the crime. The report said that Brandon had a small folded knife in his pocket, and there was a strong marriage 
marijuana scent coming from him. A bag of suspected marijuana was later found in his pocket. Samantha was arrested alongside Brandon and put in a cell until she could be interviewed. When investigators searched her car, they wrote what they found was drugs and equipment. Later, Samantha led investigators to the fields and the woods nearby Lodi Township to look for possible evidence. The lead detective on the case wrote this in his report. Miss Grigg pointed out a location that she believed the evidence was burned on Weber Road, about half a mile to the west of Dell Road. Despite a search, we did not locate what we were looking for. Still, the police had enough evidence to charge all three suspects with felony murder, armed robbery, and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Each of these charges carries a maximum sentence of life in prison. Three teenagers from Saline could spend the rest of their lives in prison if found guilty of an MSU student's death. 18-year-old Tyrell Bredernitz, 18-year-old Samantha Grigg, and 16-year-old Brendan Heim were arraigned on murder charges in the death of Dustin Frolka this afternoon. To avoid going Going to trial, Samantha took a plea deal, agreeing to plead guilty to much lesser charges of manslaughter and unarmed robbery. If she had been convicted of the original offense, the uh, murder, there would have been a life without the possibility of parole. In exchange, she also had to testify against her co-conspirators, Tyrell and Brandon. She would be obligated as part of the plea agreement to offer truthful testimony against them. Samantha then went on to reveal chilling details of what happened to Dustin on the night of February 15th. That night, she said she received a call from Brendan asking her to give him and Tyrell a ride to East Lansing, where they planned to beat up and rob Dustin. On the night of the 15th, I was contacted by Brendan Hyde and Tyrell Brennanitz to be given a ride to East Lansing in order to rob Dustin and then take him and Apparently, she didn't question the plan and just went along with it, dropping the boys off at Dustin's East Lansing apartment and then going down the street to wait for them. After a while, she received a text message from Brendan telling her to come pick them up. The two teens didn't find any money in Dustin's apartment, so Brendan asked Samantha if it was okay if Dustin came into the car with them. Samantha said that all three boys, Brendan, Tyrell, and Dustin, got into the Ford Explorer Sport track and then she drove them to various ATMs so Dustin could get money. But as they were heading back to Dustin's apartment, Brendan started attacking Dustin in the back seat. In the course of taking him home, Brendan began to push him in the back seat of the car and Dustin opened the door and Brendan was wearing brass knuckles and Dustin could no longer take the assault, so he opened the door and jumped out of the Explorer, which was going between 45 and 60 miles per hour. Samantha said that she stopped the car and allowed Brendan and Tyrell to get out of the vehicle. They went back to Dustin, gave him some more, and then stole his money, around $800, and his clothes. Tyrell and Brendan went outside of the car, took his clothing and his money, the three teens then sped off and left Dustin to die in the middle of the road. Samantha's lawyer told the court that the plan to rob Dustin was hatched on February 14th at a party that Samantha did not attend. He said that she was offered $100 for gas money to drive the two boys to Saline for the robbery. He argued that his client went along with the plan because of peer pressure. The lawyer went on to describe Samantha as a talented musician who had no previous criminal record, though she was facing possession charges after being found with marijuana and prescription pills when she was arrested. During her sentencing hearing, Samantha apologized to Dustin's family for her role in the murder, saying that she didn't mean to hurt him. I would like to extend my deepest remorse to the family of the victim. He was a fellow musician. It really breaks my heart. And I... I wish I could take it back every day. But Dustin's family didn't buy this. They believed that she was as much to blame as the two monsters who killed Dustin. You took a son, you took a brother, you took my nephew. Most but not least, you took a father from his daughter. Dustin's half-sister said that Dustin's skull was fractured multiple times because of the beating. She said that Samantha lacked morals and conscience because her brother thought that he would take his chances by jumping out of the car rather than being beaten from the brass knuckles. But 
Samantha stopped the car for Brandon and Tyrell to go out and continue the beating. You helped to murder him, strip his clothes, his money, his dignity, but not his faith. Justin's stepmother asked the judge to give Samantha the maximum possible sentence, listing out all of the moments that she felt Samantha stole from Dustin. He's gonna miss his daughter Melody's first steps, her first words, her birthdays, her graduations. Her joys, her heartaches, she'll never get to know her daddy. Now we live knowing that on the night of February 15th, 2014, while we were inside our warm houses, Dustin was left to die on the side of the road and there was nothing we could do to help him. She pointed out that Samantha could have stopped the murder and had multiple opportunities to not be involved. As she spoke, Samantha could be seen nodding in agreement and wiping tears from her face with her head facing down. The family felt that Samantha showed no remorse for her actions because of how coolly she re-encountered the events that led to Dustin's death. They also pointed out that in the days following the murder, Samantha had tweeted that she was getting a cream tattoo. Cream. C-R-E-A-M is the acronym for cash rules everything around me. Samantha's lawyer said that after she leaves prison, she planned to go to college, study music, and help young people progress musically. This was really hurting for Dustin's family to hear because as they said, she's taken away Dustin's chances to do any of those things. Before giving the sentence, the judge told Samantha that he had received letters from several people, some asking him for leniency because she would turn her life around, and other Others hoping that she would spend the rest of her life in prison. One person even said that Samantha should burn in hell. Eventually, Samantha was sentenced to 6 to 15 years in prison. Well, she was the lead singer in a local band with a very bright future, but now a teenager from Celine will spend at least six years in prison. A judge sentenced Samantha Grigg today in the murder of the University of Michigan student. After the hearing, Dustin's stepmother said she accepted the sentence even though she wanted Samantha to spend more time behind bars. I don't think there's peace ever. They've ruined their lives, but they've ruined a lot of our lives too. Samantha's co-conspirator, Tyrell, was a familiar face to local authorities. In fact, officers had gone to his apartment at least eight times in the past 14 months. There were also occasions where the police could have arrested him and put him in jail before February 15th. On one occasion, on December 3rd, 2013, a judge had sentenced him to 93 days in jail for breaking into a vehicle to steal property worth less than $200, but the jail sentence was suspended. A little more than a month later, on January 13th, he appeared before the same judge again, this time because of a previous assault and battle. Battery charge. Because of repeatedly violating probation, the judge sentenced him to five days in prison, but then decided to hold off on imposing the sentence until the next review hearing on February 24th. The judge would later say that he gave Tyrell all these chances because he hoped that he would change his ways. Each time Tyrell would appear before him, the judge would try to talk some sense into him, and Tyrell would promise to change his behavior and better his life. But now, the disappointed judge said when he would say things, he was lying, as it turns out. Still, the judge never imagined that Tyrell would be capable of committing something as horrible as murder. On February 12th, three days before Dustin was killed, a woman went to the police station to report an assault and battery. She told the police that she lived in the apartment below Tyrell and that she noticed garbage falling outside her apartment, and some of it was blowing back onto her porch. When she walked outside to check where the trash was coming from, she saw Tyrell and two other guys on the balcony above her apartment. She said that Tyrell then threw an empty beer bottle at her and almost hit her in the head. At the time, an arrest warrant had already been issued for Tyrell's arrest because of a probation violation for his previous crimes. The officers who were handling his case wrote in their report that they had gone to Tyrell's apartment on February 12th and knocked on his door, but he refused to open it. So they waited outside in the parking lot for Tyrell to come out so they could arrest him on the bench warrant, but Tyrell never came out. They said that the charges were not serious enough for them to kicked down his door, so they left. The next time they heard about Tyrell was after Dustin's murder. At first, Tyrell had pleaded not guilty to the murder, but he changed his mind and decided to take a plea deal. He pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and admitted everything, including that he and Brendan had planned to rob and rough up Dustin. He said that he was in the front passenger seat when Brendan began beating Dustin with brass knuckles. When Dustin jumped out of the moving car, he said that Brendan got out of the SUV and took off some of his clothes, looking for money. They also took his shoes and drove away without calling for help. Dustin's family members described Tyrell and Brandon's actions as evil. Tyrell was sentenced to 25 to 38 years in prison. 
18-year-old Tyrell Bredernitz is headed to prison for his role in the murder of MSU sophomore Dustin Frolka in February. Bredernitz pled guilty today to second-degree murder as part of a plea deal that could have him testifying against Brendan Heim. At this point, Brandon was the only one remaining, and the prosecution had determined that despite being the youngest of the three, he was the mastermind of the crime. Both Samantha and Tyrell had agreed to testify against him, but before his trial began, he also accepted a plea deal and pleaded guilty to first-degree murder. He told the judge everything that happened, including how he, Tyrell, and another man came up with the plot to rob Dustin while hanging out at an apartment on February 14th. The plan was to take Dustin to various locations to obtain money. They then went to an ATM and Taco Bell, where a man reportedly gave Dustin money. Brendan also admitted that he started beating him in the backseat of the car. He went on to apologize to Dustin's family, saying that he didn't really think about the possible consequences of his actions. Brendan's lawyer said that substance abuse and being part of a drug culture offered some type of explanation for what happened. He said that Brandon's mom and stepdad had tried getting him mental health counseling before the incident happened, but it was of no use. As part of a plea agreement, Brandon was sentenced to 32 and a half to 60 years in prison. What do you guys think about this case? Should Samantha have received a longer sentence for her role in Dustin's death? Let me know your thoughts in a comment section and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.